Hello, students. All right, we're back for another round here. Hopefully, you did a lot of work yesterday to get all of your work done in a timely fashion. And you'll see how those words come into play today. Uh, but have any of you ever gotten a, uh, an idea? Anyone ever get an idea? Raise your hand if you've ever gotten a good idea. Well, I have an idea now. <laughs> uh, I have a little idea here about light bulbs. How many of you have ever changed a light bulb? Raise your hand if you've ever changed a light bulb. How do you know which light bulb to use to replace a bulb with? How do you know whether you're getting the right light bulb or not? Can anyone tell us how do you find the correct light bulb? Okay, maybe you referred to something called the wattage. Here I have a light bulb, and can you see it is a 100 watt light bulb. Now, if I had a 100 watt light bulb that burned out and I replaced it with, say, a 20 watt light bulb, would we know that? And if so, how would we know that? What do you think? Yeah, it, it, we would know it because it would be a lot dimmer. It wouldn't be a very bright idea. It wouldn't be a very powerful thing to do because that light bulb would be weaker than the original light bulb. So you always want to make sure that you match up the wattage, the correct wattage of a bulb to make it as, you know, as bright as you desire. So you're all familiar with the unit called the watt, but did you know it do you know who it's named after? Everybody? Yeah, our scientist of the week, James Watt. And the watt is a unit of power. In fact, why don't we head to our notes now? Yesterday we talked about work. Today we're going to talk about power. And so let's get down to it. What is Power. Pause me now and discuss. What do you think power is? Now, hopefully you all know that by studying your vocabulary. And, and uh, hopefully you know that power is the rate at which work is done or accomplished. And I've underlined a word there, and I've given you a visual hint or clue. Could anyone tell me why did I underline the word rate and give a visual clue? It's because the word rate means you are comparing something over time. You may recall last week talking about pulse rate or heart rate, the number of beats per minute. And the per, what does the per mean? Divided by. So power is the rate at which work is done. Yesterday, we talked all about work, and you know what work is from a scientific perspective now. So if power is the rate at which work is done, who can tell me what do you think the equation or the formula for power is? Well, hopefully this is what you came up with. Power, big P, equals big W for work per time or divided by time. We can use words in there to express it so that we can see power 
equals work divided by time. Make sure you're writing all of these things down in your notes so that you can see the progression that we are following here. In our next step, we'll, I'll be showing you what units are used to express power. And here it is. One joule per second is equal to a watt. A watt is one joule per second. And you know what a joule is now. It is a newton meter, one newton meter. So a watt is a joule per second. Power is a measure of the amount of work that is done divided by a given period of time. Now, tomorrow's lab activity, we're going to be dealing with these concepts a little bit more in a way that hopefully will help you understand them. But before we get to the application, we need to make sure we have a good foundation on how to number crunch and work through these two equations. So yesterday you had practice calculating for work, and you need that information to help you calculate for power. So let's just go down on our page to the example space and let's work on an example together. So here we have, oh boy, oh boy, this looks overwhelming already. Now don't be overwhelmed. In fact, don't even look at it for a moment. Just look at me and take a deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth, in through your nose, out through your mouth. Relax, relax. Remember, word problems are not scary things. They're just words. They're just words and numbers. They can't hurt you. So relax and let's work through this together. Don't jump ahead or you will be doing a lot more work than you need to do. You'll see what I mean in a moment. So just follow here with me now. I'll read it to you. A student who weighs 500 newtons climbs a flight of stairs five meters high. How much work is done? Oh my, raise your hand if that sounds familiar to any of you. Hopefully it does because that is the exact problem we had and we finished yesterday. You don't have to do it again unless you really want to, okay? But we've already done the first part of this word problem because we need to know the work in order to calculate power. Because the second part of the question here begins, if they climbed it in five seconds, how powerful are they? So using our information from yesterday, which is all written right here already, and if you want to see this in your book, just turn the page back and you've already done all of this work from yesterday to calculate work. So starting today, you already know how much work is done, 2,500 joules. You are given additional information, five seconds, a measure of time, and you're being asked a question about powerful. How powerful are they? So let's follow the same five steps in solving this problem. So everybody, what is step number one? Yeah, sure. And guess what? We've already drawn it yesterday, but if you want to draw it again today, that's great. That's great. What is step two, everybody? Table of values. So what I'm doing in this example is I'm just adding to yesterday's table of values. I'm adding the information for time, lowercase t equals five seconds, and uppercase p for power equals the question mark. That's what we're looking for. Third step, everybody. 
should be easy since it's right in front of us here, is the equation. So who can tell us what is the equation for power? Power equals work divided by time, or P equals W divided by T. Make sure you are copying in your book this example because you're going to use this example to help you in a little while. All right, next step. Do I even need to ask? What is the next step, everybody? Plug in the values. So we take the numbers from our table of values plug them into our equation. And so here's what we get in our plugged in equation. Power equals 2,500. Remember, it's joules. Divided by five. Remember, it's seconds. So it's joules per second. 2,500 divided by five, which brings us to the fifth and final step in solving these problems, which is finding the solution. So who can, in your head, determine 2,500 divided by 5? Well, it's 25 divided by 5, which is 5, and add two zeros. So your answer is 500 watts. Well, what are 500 watts? Well, that's the equivalent, that's the same as five 100 watt light bulbs. So take five 100 watt light bulbs. Now, think about this for a minute. An individual student running up a flight of stairs that's five meters high, that's about two stories, running up a flight of stairs in five seconds generates 500 watts of power. You could light up five 100 watt light bulbs if you ran up a flight of stairs that fast. Think about that. Think about that for a moment. You are all pretty powerful people, but tomorrow's lab, we're going to figure out who among you is the most powerful person in the class by doing a little lab activity. But stay tuned for tomorrow for that. Because right now, I would like you to utilize the time that you have available to you, the remainder of the period, to use this example problem to help you complete the remaining practice problems in your book. Then we'll have opportunity to discuss your answers and the work that you use to get to the answers. And then you can go back to Google Classroom and follow any instructions there. So uh, today, I'd like you again to practice with these power problems. And I will say for now, bye-bye.